This game has one of the most remarkable aging and technology progression systems I've ever seen. I'm talking about Rise of Nations, a game released in 2003 and published by Westlake Interactive, the developers behind Civilization 3 and Star Trek Elite Force 2. Now, why do I consider it one of the best in this category? I mean, there's Age of Empires with a similar style and concept, and it's even older. It has gone through numerous changes and improvements over time and they still release newer versions today. So why does Rise of Nations stand out to me? Hello, apparently I'm lucky. I remember the first time I installed this game and played it. I immediately hated it. I mean, it was so challenging for an 8 year old kid with an IQ below 25. However, the presence of the Persian Empire in the game boiled my patriotic childhood blood. I decided I wanted to play it more. You see, this was the Age of Empires era, and I had that game too, which I really loved, but this one was distinct. It was really amazingly designed. The technology didn't just advance up to the industrial age, it progressed further. It had tanks, guns, airplanes, and missiles. I simply fell in love with it. That's why I felt compelled to create this video, to encourage you all to give it a shot if you're a classic RTS fan or even just an RTS fan in general. You start the game in Stone Age, with a single town name based on your nation. The game features a number of nations, although they are not as varied as those in Civilization series. It had the one I liked, so I don't really care about the others. Anyways, each nation's city style changes through each era, and the soldiers will change based on the era you are at. But different soldiers from different nations are not significantly different based on stats. It's mostly about the advancements you've made up to that point in military section. For instance, if you are fighting someone in the Bronze Age, while you are at the modern era, your soldiers will have the upper hand. This is especially true if you've been upgrading your military at the library, which requires knowledge acquired from the universities. In the game there are merchants and caravans. Caravans establish trade routes between your cities, while merchants settle near valuable sites to gather resources, whether it's money or food. New resources appear as you progress. For instance, at first you can use obsidian, but as you advance, you can utilize oil rigs and take advantage of that. The game offers various ways to win. You can defeat other cities, siege and take them over, create the seven wonders of the world, or reach a certain knowledge cap. It's entirely up to you and how you choose to play, whether by peaceful means or by waging war. For an RTS game, it certainly has engaging complexities. This is the main reason why I prefer this game over similar ones. In turn-based games, creating a complex system might seem like a simple task. However, it's not that true about RTS. Instead of enhancing the game's intrigue, you'll likely make it impossibly complicated. Yet this game strikes a balance, resting somewhere in the middle. It draws heavily from TBS games while maintaining an excitement and captivation characteristic of RTS games. I truly believe they've executed an incredible job in maintaining this balance, something that not many games manage to accomplish. Also, the game offers an amazing tutorial that will teach you everything you need to know, which I believe is amazing. The game's visuals aren't its strongest point, especially for a game from 2003. They are okay considering the time it was made. I say okay because Warcraft 3 came out a year earlier and did a better job with the way things look. However, when we think about how the game looks, we need to think about a few things. For example, Warcraft was made by a much bigger group with more money to spend, while the game we're talking about here was made by a smaller group. So yes, the way the game looks is good enough for you to enjoy. The game's story is its weakest aspect. I've discussed RTS games before, and what I really enjoy about them is the freedom to play however you want to and be creative with everything. Rise of Nation does this really well. 
However, there are other games like Stronghold 2, Warcraft, Age of Mythology, and Stronghold Legends that have a story that compels you to play. On the flip side, Rise of Nation has a story that's quite boring and repetitive, and it doesn't have much to offer in terms of narrative. While this might be a concern for many gamers, it didn't bother me. I find enjoyment in the creative side of the game, which I believe many RTS fans also value more than a good story. Overall, the gameplay of Rise of Nations is fantastic. Even for a game from 2003, it provides a lot that many games, not even those made today, can match. While there are plenty of other options out there, the nostalgia that comes with this game is just something you cannot find elsewhere. So I highly recommend giving it a shot, especially if you're a fan of classic RTS games just like me. If Rise of Nations wasn't your thing, then this classic RTS game is likely more your style. Thanks for watching.